Good morning. I am down in the basement this morning and I am in junky clothes that I don't mind getting a little bit of bleach on. And the reason for this is that I am going to clean some pots. So I'm going to show you how to do this, how I do this. I'm going to tell you how some people do it. Uh, a lot of people have slightly different ways of doing it. My main goal is to make sure that I keep down the population of indoor pests for my plants when I am planting them, you know, transplanting them into new pots and all of that. Uh, one of the problems I've had in the past was that I've gotten spider mites, and that was probably due to the fact that I did not always sterilize my pots. I would use them year after year, eventually the spider mites crept in, and boom, um, I had an infestation. There's a lot of things that can cause uh, a, a big mess in your basement or in your dining room or wherever you're growing your, your plants inside to get them ready for outdoor uh, planting. So it is a good idea to make sure that your pots are clean uh, in between plantings. So anyway, the first step of the process is always to knock out all of the extra lumpy stuff that is stuck in your pots. You want to clean them out as well as possible, and then you want to wash them in a warm bleach, uh, I'm sorry, in a warm soapy solution first, before you put any bleach in. Um, and then, so you want to make sure that you get all of the, the clumps off of, your, uh, off of your pots until they really look clean. Now, the reason for this is that bleach becomes deactivated when it comes into con contact with too much stuff. So the more stuff, the more dirt, the more clods that, that it has to disinfect, the less active that bleach is going to be. And so that's why you need to use more bleach if you're doing this with dirty pots. If you're doing it with cleaner pots, you may be able to get away with a little less bleach, or you might still want to play it safe and go with uh, the 10% the bleach solution that, uh, that many people recommend. And I've used that 10% bleach solution very strong. Uh, it's a little stronger than I want. So, you know, sometimes this is, a, this is both an art and a science, and, and you have to make some, um, some decisions on your own about what works for you. And in this case, my decision this year is I'm not going to use quite as much bleach. Uh, I'm going to use a two tablespoon to one gallon uh, bleach solution. I'm going to soak them for a longer time. So I'll get them very clean before I start, then I will soak them. Now, one of the other important things to know is between soap and bleach, you need to get everything really clean. And that is because soap and bleach should not mix. When you do, you risk creating a gas that is really not good for you to be breathing. So, uh, so we try to make sure that in between the soap step and the bleach step, the pots are once again very clean. So uh, first, I'm going to bring some of the stuff outside and knock some of the, the, the clumps of dirt off of it. So a lot of this stuff seems very straightforward, but I'm going to go through the steps with you just so that you can be comfortable with it if you haven't done it before. Um, the next step is to wash your pots in warm water with dish soap, just ordinary dish soap and a sponge and some warm water and just make sure that you get all of those bits off of your pots so that when you put it in the bleach solution the bleach solution has a little less to do and can remain uh, concentrated enough to actually disinfect your pots. So we have got some pots that look really clean now. The thing is they're still not sterilized and that really is an important step in the process. So I'm going to use a bleach solution. I am using less than is recommended by the professionals. Professionals recommend a 10% bleach solution. I'm going to actually use much less than that. I'm going to use two tablespoons per gallon. And I am going to soak these for longer than you would if you were in a, an environment where you had lots and lots of pots and you just had to move these through very quickly. And also, I've cleaned them better already than they are in some of those situations too. So my gamble here, and it's not a huge gamble because I'm pretty sure that this is gonna work out. 
Um, and I have used the same pots a couple of years, sometimes without even washing them and had no ill effects. So one of the funny things about bleach that I think some people don't realize is there's a reason that we use cool water with bleach. Because with warm water, you actually have the possibility of inactivating the bleach to a certain extent. So you definitely want to use cool or cold water when you're doing your bleach solution. Don't use hot water, even though it's tempting because it feels like hot water is going to do a better job at cleaning things up. The cool water is best for the bleach part of this process. So now you see I've got some of my pots in the bleach solution. I'm going to rotate the other pots through. Now this would not be advisable if you had lots of stuff on your, um, uh, on your pots. If there were dirt and, uh, and, and grime left on these pots, I wouldn't want to reuse the bleach water. In general, you probably don't want to use, reuse the bleach water too many times, but I have got a small number of pots this morning, so I'm going to do this soak with a couple of rounds of pots, and we're going to hope for the best because it's, uh, it's not a 10% bleach solution, like I said. It is a, it is a less concentration, but we're going to do it for a while. Um, so uh, I did this earlier in the season for my initial pots that I started my tomatoes in. Now I'm going to be transplanting the tomatoes into larger pots, selecting the best ones and the ones that I you know, really want to make sure that I have varieties of, and, uh, and transplanting them into much larger pots so they'll be ready to go in a month or so when it's time to put them out into the yard. All right, thank you for joining me. Please give me the thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and check us out at thefoodforestgardenclub.org. And we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.